What's up guys, Mr. Marsden here again for another episode of At Home Literature. This time we've got double period lit, so we're going to look at a couple things. Um, I'm actually going to start over here. We're going to look at the classwork that we had yesterday, which was to complete a journal entry. And I gave you instructions on how to do that journal entry. And I even posted a video uh, about um, what was expected of you and, and the tools that we had available to us. Please let me know if you got that video. I got a message from Diana, um, not a message, sort of an automated request thing that she wanted uh, permission to view the video. If you guys don't have, didn't have permission to view the video or the video wasn't coming up, please let me know. That means that I have to fix some things about how I put those videos together and how I post them here. Um, maybe I'll just post them straight to YouTube and then post the link because I, I think that would be easier anyway. Um, but let's talk about the journal entry um, and then we'll talk about the classwork that's available for us today. Sound good? Great. Uh, our journal entry is posted on March 23rd. Um, as you can see, I can see how many of us handed them in. Five, that's three more than the amount that handed them in before. So thank you. But we still got five people who are basically just not tuning in, not, not interested. Um, what's, what's up, up with, with that? that? You, you guys, guys aren't responding on the WhatsApp group. You guys aren't responding in emails. You guys aren't responding in the classroom, uh, which is a problem. So I guess I'll have to call you each individually to figure out what to do about that, but later, later for that. Right now, let's focus on um, our classwork. Now, each of you received an individualized version of this document, um, which is basically your instructions for the final part of this journal entry. You are to summarize the events of the trial, discuss the resulting verdict and immediate reactions, comment on how this outcome made you feel, and identify at least one character that seemed to feel similarly to you. Now, we have words like summarize, discuss, comment, and identify, and you guys would recognize these words because at the beginning of the semester, at the beginning of last semester actually, I gave you a list of CXC exam terms, and these are the terms that you guys are going to be seeing uh, in your exams starting from third form, uh, until you have your graduation exam and your CXC exam for English B and possibly even English A even after that. And these exam terms are actually across the board. So you may even be asked to summarize in integrated science. You may be asked to identify in mathematics. These are, these are things that CXC uses and it's very specific language because each of these has a specific function. Think of these as functions in a program, right? Do you guys do computer programming? You guys do Excel, right? Sum, average, all of those have uh, different functions, entire uh, uh, activities that you have to, that the computer will operate on based only on a single word. So think of these as those kinds of functions. The single word summarize in this case. Now, Michaela asked, sir, do I have to talk about every single detail of the trial? Uh, and that's why I posted that video, that YouTube video of the five finger summary in five minutes. Uh, if you haven't seen that, go and check that out. Um, five finger summary. Basically, you do not have to post every single detail. That is not what a summary is. I'm not asking you to retell it. I'm asking you to summarize it. Tell me what it was, where did it take place, when did it take place, who was involved, and what happened, why should we care. Uh, and there's something else in the palm, I don't remember, but you guys, you guys can go and check it out. So a summary of the events of the trial. Uh, let's see if we can't do that right now, right? For the events of the trial, um, well, what was happening? Tom Robinson. Oh. Let me, let me make some space here, sorry. 
Tom Robinson, a black man. Don't need to capitalize that. Black man from Maycomb was accused of raping Mayela Ewell. Who else was involved? So we have Tom Robinson, Mayela Ewell. Um, we have Hectate. Bob Ewell. Mayela and Tom Robinson. They were all asked to uh, give testimony. And then why does any of that matter? Um, well, in the end, it seemed obvious that Tom Robinson was innocent. Right. In the end, it seemed obvious that Tom Robinson was innocent. Why was it obvious? Well, because we know from evidence given in the trial that Tom Robinson's, was it his left? Robinson's left arm was badly injured when he w was much younger and he could hardly raise it to swear on the Bible. No. He could hardly he could hardly use it. Um, since Mayella was injured on, let's say she was injured by someone using their left hand, suspicion instead was placed on Bob Ewell, who was left-handed. Hey, it's not great. It's not wonderful. Uh, it doesn't sound very academic, but it's a summary. That's what happened during the trial. Oh, we... Yeah. Uh, in our second paragraph, discuss the resulting verdict and immediate reactions. Whose immediate reactions? Who do you think? Well, we're talking about the events in the novel, so it will probably be the reactions of the people in the novel. Uh, what was the verdict? Despite all this evidence, Tom Robinson was found guilty. Um, let's see, can we remember any immediate reactions without going to the book? It's upset, Jem and Scout. Jem, Scout, and Dill, they were all there, remember. Um, but seemed to come to no surprise to the Negroes in the, do we capitalize that? In the courthouse. Instead, they stood To show respect to a, how would we describe Atticus's reaction? Distraught? 
as he walked out. Is that pretty accurate? Those are the immediate reactions of the people who were in that courtroom. If I'm leaving anything out, uh, basically all I have to do is go back and find out, do research, get it from the text, uh, and then quote the text in there. Uh, and even while I'm pulling all this together, I didn't do the first part of the journal, which was to sort of extrapolate, to, to, to think about and process what was going on for a little while. And I asked you specifically to explain it to someone else, to explain it to someone in your household, which is a good opportunity for people to be in the same space at a time like this without driving each other crazy. Tell them a little story, a thing that happened, right? Um, when we are explaining to other people, we are reinforcing what it is that we understand and what it is that we know, and we're checking our metacognition. That's a fancy word that educators like to use, but it simply means we're checking for what we already know. We're checking to make sure that the things we know are in fact the things that we know. Um, and sometimes we may check our metacognition and realize, I don't really understand what was going on there. I, I, I don't get why they stood up. I don't understand why Atticus was reacting that way. Um, why didn't he leave through his usual exit? What was all that about? Um, so it gives us an opportunity to realize, okay, I need to go back and I need to check this out. But the point is, you get it down out of your head, get it on paper. When it's coming out of your head, it's also being filtered by your mind. Your mind can process it and fill in the blanks um, where they need to be filled in. Now we have a summary. We've discussed. Have we discussed? No, we haven't discussed because discuss also means that I include my interpretation. I've given you uh, basically the things that have happened. If I wanted to discuss this, remember that these are specific functions. If I wanted to discuss this, I need to interpret. In, I need. I need to insert my own interpretation. I need to insert what I think all of this meant. Um, and there are words that I can use to signal this. In my opinion, I believe, I think, those are words that tell you that this information is not coming from the text, it's coming from me, from the author, from the author of this journal, not Harper Lee. Uh, so that's basically what you needed to do. You needed to summarize in your own words what happened during the trial. You needed to discuss uh, what was the results of the verdict and what was the immediate reactions. Uh, we also needed to comment on how this out outcome made you feel. And remember that a comment this time doesn't require evidence. You're just saying things. And especially if it's how it made you feel, there's no evidence other than the fact that you're saying it, right? This is coming straight from you. Uh, I know for me, I felt gut-wrenched. I felt as though uh, the entire world just sort of collapsed underneath me because it seemed so obvious that this man was innocent and yet these people would basically throw away his life like that. But then I also remember that they were trying to throw away his life for a long time. And then I have to identify, I have to identify at least one character that seemed to feel similarly to me. Now for my case, the one character who felt equally gut-wrenched, equally uh, bamboozled, equally shocked and dismayed at the result would have been Jem. Throughout the trial, Jem was watching what was happening and he seemed to have some kind of awareness of how this was going and the strategies that Atticus was using. And yet this result was completely counter to what he thought was going to happen. So for my fourth paragraph, I would talk about Jem, how Jem felt so sure and confident of the result of this trial and how it turned out to be completely different from him. Now, according to the rubric that we've given, I need to include a few other things. I need to include some of the academic frames. If I am quoting from the text, I need to include phrases like, according to the book, or 
as found in chapter so-and-so. Uh, if I am making a connection, I need to include frames like uh, uh, this correlates with the idea of, or uh, this tells us, um, if I am paraphrasing, I need to include frames like, in other words, that is to say, uh, and essentially I need to take my ideas and put them in fancy clothes. It's my ideas, it's my writing, and there's no reason why my writing can't be a little, you know, classed up a little bit. Uh, once we use those academic frames, once we get used to using them, we'll find that uh, we sound a lot smarter than we realize we are. And that's not to say that we're not smart. It's just to say that we are having trouble with expression. So at this point, let's see how uh, some of the work that you've turned in has come out. Um, we also had, I had a message here from Michaela, sir, I already sent in my work just now. Uh, that was yesterday, that was yesterday pretty late at the night. Um, well, cool. Let's see, where's Michaela's work? Michaela has two accounts here. Okay, all right, all right. So which one, which one sent in the work? Ah, Dogface Michaela, okay, cool. Dogface Michaela, it says missing because nothing was submitted. And if I open her document, okay, looks like the exact same thing that I gave you guys. So nothing's been added here. Michaela, if you've submitted, um, can you tell me where? Where did you submit it? Where is it? Why am I not seeing it? Help me out here. Hey, Tony. Hey, Leon. Hey, Dan. Um, hey, Michaela, what's the holdup, guys? What's going on? Can I see the, that work, please? All right. Uh, who should we look at? Um, let's do this. Where did I click? Uh, I think I clicked on dial -in. Okay. So, remember... We are summarizing, we are discussing, we are commenting, and we are identifying. Forgot to mention that for identify, that, that doesn't take a lot either. Identify simply means that I point out one person. Uh, let's see, the only thing that white people have, have that black people need or should want is the power and no one holds power forever. James Baldwin, uh, I misspelled Baldwin, but that's cool. I like that quote from James Baldwin. Um, James Baldwin is pretty, pretty important because at a time when uh, America was very divided, at a time when race was an even bigger deal than it is now, or at least it was closer to the surface, um, James Baldwin decided, screw it. I'm going to Paris. And he moved away. He moved to Europe and realized that there was much better treatment for him in those European countries than he could get in his own home country. Um, and from there, he did a lot of writing, a lot of thinking, a lot of philosophizing about race relations in the Americas. Um, okay. In the novel To Kill a Mockingbird, a trial was developed, whereas... Tom Robinson was accused of physically and sexually abusing a young white woman named Viola Ewell. The trial was tensed up. Tensed up? I think we can settle for just tense in that case. Sorry, let me... And this is the process that I'm going to be doing for a lot of you guys. I'm going to be reading through it and maybe leaving some comments. Just tense will do. And just because I left a comment doesn't mean that you're losing points. Uh, it simply means that I'm trying to help you with your expression. It would be the same as if we were in class, you were doing this writing, uh, and you brought your progress to me to check, and I gave a recommendation. I say, maybe this word would work better. Maybe 
expressing it this way would be uh, more beneficial to you. So don't get nervous when you see a whole bunch of comments. Get nervous when you read what those comments are. And I'll tell you what I mean in just a minute. Um, trial was tense. Anxiety and nervousness was spread throughout the courtroom. Atticus asked Tate, Tate who? Who's Tate? The cat's mother? Hey guys, when discussing a character, mention their full name the first time. After that, you can call them Tate, you can say heck, you can say whatever you like, but the first time you mention them in your journal entry, it should be heck Tate. Atticus asked Hectate several times if he or Bob Ewell, the victim's father, called for a doctor. The answer, no, sparked controversy in Atticus. There should be an apostrophe there. Atticus's mind. Hmm. Now, let's see. That's a very, a, a bit of a fancy sentence. Maybe it doesn't match um, everything else that's going on here, so... Uh, I'm going to do a quick check. And this is the quick check that I do. This is the problem when we're doing work online um, because I get to check it online as well. Uh, did you know that when doing a Google search, if you include quotation marks, it basically tells Google to search for that exact phrase or sentence? And sometimes Google will come back and say, no results found for that exact phrase or sentence. Well, what does that tell me? That tells me that this exact phrase or sentence does not exist on the internet. And so it must have come from the writer's mind. So good job, darling. You passed the test. Yule was asked to write his name on a piece of paper, not realizing that it could show the jury that he is left-handed and could then be a suspect. Maella then took the stand. She immediately began to weep, fearful that Atticus will break her with the writing trick as he did with her father. Woo! Tom was asked to talk. He shared a different testimony from my, my yellow ones. Uh, what we really want is from my yellow apostrophe S. Mayela's one. Right? Cool. Hey, that's a lot, but it's a pretty good summary. It is not three or four chapters worth, which makes it a decent summary. It tells me what happened um, during the trial. Uh, our second paragraph tells me what was the result. We think you're guilty, but not very. Uh, no jury in this part of the world is going to say, we think you're guilty. He is, convict he is convicted of rape, as it, as it is his words, versus a white woman's. Cool. I don't know why there's a double full stop there, but we won't worry about that for now. As an illustration. Oh my gosh. You guys realize what this is? This is our academic writing frames. Dylan is introducing a quote directly from the text. And because it's not her idea, but it reinforces her idea, she's included the academic writing frame. As an illustration in chapter 23, it says, and then she includes her quote. Great job, Dylan. Great job including the academic writing frame. See, not all the comments are bad. Uh, no jury in this part of the world is going to say, we think you're guilty, but not very, on a charge like that. It was either straight acquittal or nothing. Uh, now, what I would like is for Dylan to come back and paraphrase that, to put that into her own words, because there are some words in there that even I uh, don't quite get. Words like acquittal. What is that? I'm not sure what that is. Can you process it for me? Uh, I need you to, I need you to mama bird it. Do you know what I mean? Uh, you know how mama birds feed baby birds? They don't just give them the food. They process it for them. They chew it up, mm, 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 break it down into simpler form, and then spit it back out. So 
I need you to mama bird uh, this information, not the food. That's disgusting. Coronavirus. Okay, so I can look through these and basically see the progress that you made. And as you guys can see, while I'm doing so, I will essentially be awarding points based on what I see. Um, all information was accurate, was delivered effectively, subject knowledge was thorough, extensive, extensive details and relevant examples. That's what Dylan showed me. She showed me extensive details and relevant examples were used to answer the essential questions. And the essential questions were to summarize the trial, comment on uh, the results, uh, no, discuss the results, comment on your reaction, and um, what was the fourth one? Identify, identify a character that um, matches your feelings, right? Dylan also identified Jem. Why isn't it selecting? Yeah. Jem gets upset, um, which I'm assuming matches what she was feeling. I have to look over it some more. Um, so good job, Dylan. I can give you four points for that, for that section. You've basically shown me that you've included all of the, uh, uh, the essential questions, the four parts. Of this part of this assignment, uh, writing fluency. I like this one. Most ideas presented in logical order. Details supported the main idea. Used scholarly vocabulary. That's the academic writing frames. Used at least four academic writing frames. Now I have to go in and check how much more um, that you maybe used. I'll, I'll give it a more thorough reading. But right now I'm just giving an illustration of how the grading system works for this. Writing conventions, now there were some spelling and grammatical errors, but so far I've seen uh, two or three, so I, typically I would give this uh, fewer than five spelling and grammar errors, fewer than five capitalization and punctuation errors, one or two flawed sentences, right? Uh, and then finally, writing voice. Now, the writing voice is basically how much of yourself do you put in it? Now we can go full academic writing and we can strip out the author's voice, but that's not what we wanted. This was a journal entry, which means that it has to have your opinions in it. Uh, so this last section might get a few people tripped up, but um, I can look through it and I can see how many of these uh, you guys have matched. You get all those points together for a total out of 16. And then when I return it, you'll be able to see your percentage. Like right up here, so far, I haven't even finished it. Dallin has already passed. She's got the 62. Um, let's see, if, if I gave her not even a perfect grade, let's say I gave a three for her writing voice, that would give her an 81 on that assignment. Um, this is a journal assignment. Journal assignments hold a separate percentage, uh, a separate weight from quizzes and texts. Um, but that's pretty good. That's pretty good, especially for an, a one that you did at home with no one else's help. All right? Now, I've already gone over oof, way longer than I expected to do on this video. I am going to have to edit it and pare it down a little bit. Um, but for now, I also just wanted to go to our other assignment, right? That would be the new one that you guys got today. You guys hear snoring in the background. It's actually my dog. She's, she's right back here, sleeping. And yeah, she sounds like an old man when she snores. Right, so our new assignment is checking for understanding questions. And this one comes in the form of a quiz. Looks like a few of you have already handed in. Um, good job, way to be proactive, way to wake up early and get the, that work done. Uh, and these are pretty simple. These are essentially quiz questions, just like we would have in class. But 
It's not being graded as a quiz this time, it's being graded as a classwork. So don't worry about it too much. Um, but your answers to these questions should appear down here and they should be in paragraph form or at least two or three sentences. Maybe not a full structured paragraph, um, but not single word answers. I've included some pictures just because I think it's a little more interesting to look at. It should be a little bit more fun. Um, who is Dolphus Raymond? Why does he pretend to be drinking liquor? You may have to do some research into, um, this is what, chapters 20 to 22. You may have to do some research into those chapters to go back and find the answers to these if you haven't done reading. This is essentially what these questions are for. Make sure that you've been reading, not wasting my time. Um, why does Jem feel confident that Atticus will win? Uh, as they wait for the verdict, Scout thinks of an early event. What is she thinking of? Why does Reverend Sykes tell Scout to stand? And as you can see, they all stand. That's this moment in the movie. Uh, who sends food over to the Finches? Why? And in what way did Judge Taylor try to help Tom Robinson? Now, technically, you guys probably can go and just Google uh, the answers to these questions, but I'm hoping that you won't do that. I'm hoping that you will actually show me what is in those beautiful, beautiful minds of yours uh, and put your own answers to these together. So do that, fill them out, hit submit at the bottom, which I feel like Michaela maybe didn't do, but then even so I could see, I would be able to see her work in progress, which is what I did for Whitney and Raphael. Um, so, gotta fix that girl. Uh, and when you do, I'll be able to see um, who submitted what uh, and how much of it you guys got. Okay. Diana's handed it in so far. Uh, Tony, hello, Tony. All right, guys, I just got to add on uh, to that last bit. I figured out how the online quiz works. Um, basically, uh, it's even better for you guys because I am checking them completely blind. Uh, I have the questions, I have all of the results, and I have no idea who gave these answers. So all I can do is either say, yes, it's correct, no, it's not correct, or I can give partial points and leave a comment. Um, so I'm gonna be doing that. I also just got a call from Raphael. Thanks again to, for reaching out, Raphael, um, saying that he was worried because it gave him a result of zero. It will give you a result of zero because I haven't graded them yet. So as I'm looking through them, I'm gonna grade them, I'm gonna check them out, and then uh, I'll give you the result when it's finished. Hope that helps. All right. See you guys.